Order. Mr. Mike Nesbitt has been given leave to make a statement on the death of James Molyneux, Baron, Baron Molyneux of Kilead, which fulfils the criteria set out in Standing Order 24, brackets 3, brackets B. If other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places and continuing to do so. All members called will have up to three minutes to speak on the subject. Mr. Mike Nesbitt. Mr. Speaker, thank you. It's uh, with huge sadness that I rise uh, to pay tribute to Jim Molyneux, James Henry Molyneux, latterly Baron Molyneux of Calaid. Uh, born in August 1920, Jim Molyneux grew up in time to join the armed forces and serve uh, in the Second World War. Famously, he was to be one of the first Allied troops to enter and liberate the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp witnessing at first hand one of the worst examples in history of man's capacity for inhumanity to fellow man. And I have no doubt that the experience cemented the values that were to guide his adult life, not least as a politician. And let me place on record, Mr. Speaker, his formidable record as an elected representative, an Antrim Borough Councillor from 1964 to 73, the MP for South Antrim from 1970 to 1983, and then MP for Lagan Valley from 83 to 97. He was also an Assembly Member for South Antrim between 1982 and 86, and he led the Ulster Unionist Party from 1979 to 1995. The statistics alone confirm the Ulster Unionist Party has today lost one of its greatest. But there is so much more to say. His 16 years as leader followed a 16-year period when Ulster Unionism had no fewer than four leaders, Terence O'Neill, James Chichester Clark, Brian Faulkner, and then Harry West. So he brought much needed stability to Ulster Unionism, and that stability extended beyond the party. Unionism and Northern Ireland also needed calm, assured leadership in the face of the ongoing terrorist campaign, and in 1985, the political threat that was the Anglo-Irish Agreement, a challenge of seismic proportions within unionism. As a man regarded as more of an integrationist than in favour of devolution, it would be hard to overestimate how painful it was for Jim Molyneux to discover he had been betrayed by the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and her advisers when she signed the agreement in Hillsborough with Taoiseach Garrett Fitzgerald. Jim Molyneux fought back with dignity. In his own words, he was not attracted to high wire acts or media sound bites. Working closely with the DUP in the aftermath of the agreement, Ian Paisley may have been the dominant media presence, but Jim Molyneux was tireless behind the scenes. A man of immense political guile, playing the game of political chess, focused on strategic outcomes. The sight of Lord Molyneux as Ulster Unionist leader wearing his medals as he laid the wreath on behalf of the party at the Cenotaph every Remembrance Sunday in London was a powerful image which epitomised the ideals of dignity and service which he embodied. His service record is outstanding both militarily and politically. He stood down as unionist leader on his 75th birthday. The following year, he stood down as an elected representative, his values strong and intact. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the party, I give thanks for a long life well lived in the dedicated service of his people. Ms. Arlene Foster. Mr. Speaker, um, I feel very privileged today to stand and pay tribute to a man for whom I have the utmost admiration, James H. Molyneux, the Baron Molyneux of Khalid, KBE, PC. And many of us knew that uh, Jim's time was short on this earth, but still, when the news came this morning, uh, it did come as a very heavy blow indeed to those of us who knew him and indeed loved him. And I suppose it is fitting uh, that his death came on Commonwealth Day because he spent so much of his time upholding the values of the Commonwealth. Uh, the first memories I have of Jim uh, was back at the time of the Anglo-Irish Agreement, the Great Betrayal, of course, when I was just 15. And then, of course, uh, I was a young unionist and I enjoyed very much being in his company uh, because he was very good company, someone who was interesting and someone who was interested in you as an individual as well. And he was interesting because of his life story, his wartime service, 
because of his UK national view of politics and because of those very famous anecdotes that he used to tell. He was a great encourager to me personally when he was leader of the UUP and uh, indeed later when he was Baron Mullen of Khalid when he could see the shortcomings of the Belfast Agreement when others could not. He was a superb grassroots campaigner. When canvassing with Jim it was always a struggle to keep up. He always uh, managed to survive a day of canvassing sustained only by a packet of polo mints. Most of all, uh, today, Mr. Speaker, I mourn his passing because he was a friend, a friend who gave advice when he was asked, a friend who often made me laugh. He had a mischievous, dry sense of humour, and I consider it a, an absolute great honour to have personally knew Jim Molno. He was a gentleman. He was a leader of utmost integrity, a man who genuinely cared about Northern Ireland and its place within the United Kingdom, and a fabulous parliamentarian. And I pass on my deepest sympathy and prayerful support to his sister-in-law, Agnes, and to his two nephews and to his niece as well. Thank you. Mr. Rim McCarthy. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I want, on behalf of Sinn Féin, to extend our sympathies to the family and friends of Jim Molyneux, Lord Khalid, who died this morning. At 94 years of age, he lived a long and fulfilling life, both politically and personally. When someone like Jim Mullen, who was undoubtedly a significant figure within unionism, having led the Ulster Unionist Party for almost two decades, the focus will be on his contribution as a political figure, and his loss to his family and friends can often take second place. So I want his family and friends to know that they are very much in our thoughts today and in the coming days. To his colleagues in the Ulster Unionist Party, and from Mike Nesbitt's contribution, it is easy to appreciate the high esteem and fondness he has held and we extend our sympathy to your party at your sense of loss to a valued colleague. Whereas his political views were different from my own, I have no doubt that Jim Molyneux would agree that he lived out the last years of his life in a more peaceful and stable place that would have been his experience in his active political life. He served as a constituency MP for some 27 years, who enjoyed the obvious support and confidence of his constituents in his work. So today, as we hear of his passing, we hope he finds restful peace. August Mershin, Jan Trokra, Eranam, Guru Mila Mayogat, Gunkula. Thank you. And come, Mr. Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Along with all our members, on behalf of the SDLP group, we want to extend our, our sadness and sympathy on the passing of Baron Molyneux of Khalid. I want to, want to offer our sincere sympathy and condolence to that of the family and many friends of James Molyneux. To say that James Molyneux has had a distinguished career would be accurate. For many years he was a household name and a key player in Northern Irish politics. I have listened to other members talk about the love, the passion and the emotion they have in their voice uh, on the lossing and the passing of someone. He spent 27 years in MP, elected to South Antrim initially and then to Lagan Valley. He was first elected as an MP in 1970 and only four years years later he became the leader of the Ulster Unionist Party in Northern Ireland and in the House of Commons. James Molyneux has certainly had a formidable career. In 1979 he became the leader of the UUP, a position he held for 16 years, probably one of the longest serving leaders of the Ulster Unionist Party as well. He led the party, as many leaders have done in Northern Ireland, through very difficult, traumatic and awful experiences. And he helped his own party guiding them in many difficult and trying times for the party as well. As other members have said, on behalf, finally on behalf of the SDLP, we offer our thoughts, our prayers and sympathy to his immediate family, to the community that he represented, to, to his friends, but also to the many unionist colleagues who have worked alongside him for many years. Thank you. Call Mr. David Ford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It gives me pleasure, though a degree of sadness, to add tributes on behalf of the Alliance Party to Lord Molno, though it's hard to remember to call him Lord because locally he was always Jim. He was certainly an assiduous worker on the ground in the constituency, previously a councillor and then for many years Member of Parliament for South Antrim as the largest constituency in the UK before he took on Lagan Valley on the reform of boundaries. And he certainly had an unusual experience as a leader of unionism 
starting off in his early days by being educated in St. James's Catholic School, where ironically he struck up a lifelong friendship with the late Councillor Bobby Burns, father of our former colleague in here, Thomas, and it showed something of the reach he had as a unionist. He appreciated even at that stage the differences in this society. There's also no doubt, as Mike Nesbitt has referred to, that to listen to some of those radio interviews of his experiences as a young RAF man at the liberation of Belson must have touched him enormously and gave him a commitment and a drive to public service. He was, as others have said, the leader of his party for 16 years, something which few of us in this chamber can appreciate exactly how it amounts to. And he certainly had a significant impact over some of the most turbulent years in this region as he carried through that role of leadership. Arlene Foster talked about remembering campaigning with Jim Molnar. Well, I, I can also remember campaigns in which Jim Molnar was involved. The only difference was I think that three times in a row in the 1970s, my efforts were to reduce the largest majority in the UK by one. That's a measure of the respect and the support that he had in the constituency. And he certainly had respect and support because he treated others always, he was a perfect gentleman, he treated others with respect. He had a personal reputation, whether or not people agreed with him politically. He was Jim, and people saw that in him. He was, in latter years, a constituent of mine as a councillor and as an MLA, but I think he'd also be remembered locally very much how he served his constituents, how he cared for the people of South Antrim and then Lagan Valley, how he went out of his way to do what he thought best for all of them. And even in latter years after he'd retired, he would have still been out and about for some time then, events like Antrim Show, other public events. He was still there wanting to see what was going on in the locality. So on behalf of my party, I would wish to express sympathy to his sister-in-law, Agnes, to the other members of the family circle at Aldergrove and beyond. Thank you. And I Mr. Jim Allister. I readily join in the tributes to Lord Molyneux. He uh, has been described variously as a true gentleman, and so he was, as quiet and unassuming, uh, and he was that too, both about his military career and his political career. Uh, uh, but he was a giant on our political scene uh, who moved through it uh, in that quiet, unassuming way that characterized him. Uh, and he was, above all, a unionist through and through. There was no hint of Ulster nationalism about Jim Molyneux. He was a committed, wholly committed uh, believer in all the values of the United Kingdom and all the parts of the United Kingdom. And I knew him somewhat uh, and have been, uh, I've got, gathered also from many conversations with uh, the president of my party, Willie Ross, uh, who held him in very high esteem. I have heard many accounts and stories of the steadfastness. And if there was one word, perhaps, which sums up Jim Molyneux, it was steadfast. He was not easily blown off course. He uh, stuck to his vision and his view of things. Uh, and in that, he deserves the respect of us all. Uh, and Ulster politics, that we haven't seen and heard of him laterally, will now be the poorer for the passing of Lord Molyneux. And I salute his memory, uh, and I express condolences to his family and to his party upon their loss. Thank you. Can I call Mr. Basil uh, I knew him, of course, uh, but to me, he was always uh, Jim Molyneux. Um, even the last time I spoke to him, actually, was in Westminster, uh, where he courteously took the time to talk to me. It was a few years ago, actually. Um, but he, oh, that was the thing about Jim, is that he always had time for people, no matter what uh, you thought or where you were coming from. And um, I can say that in my experience in the constituency, uh, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say anything bad about him. He was always our Jim, a great man. And uh, people were talking about his, uh, his uh, majority. 
Uh, it was indeed a, a wonderful thing to behold. And so it is sad when people must pass away, uh, particularly of his generation. Um, I think um, the whole issue about being involved in the war gives a certain base for what you're thinking about the future is. And, and we're sort of at the stage now where, where th those that were actively involved have passed away. His biggest contribution, I think, um, is one of these things behind the scenes where uh, people have talked about him working tirelessly in the background. It is not an easy thing to hold together the unionist community or even the unionist party. And that was his great talent, actually, that he was able to bring all strands of unionism together uh, in a way, frankly, that sometimes you weren't quite sure how he did it, but he did it indeed, and, and, as a, and that's a, a great tribute. So we are in a different place now. I do offer my condolences to his family, and I offer to him, in his memory, his thanks for his service to Northern Ireland. And I call Mr. Danny Ken. I would uh, like to join with others in, in paying tribute to uh, the life of James Henry Molyneux, Lord Molyneux Khalid, um, and I am deeply saddened uh, uh, at his passing. Uh, I well recall uh, in my early days uh, as a young political representative serving in local government the encouragement and the advice that he gave me. Uh, he had a very distinguished uh, uh, war record. Uh, he served this nation in war and he gave very strong and determined leadership in the most difficult period of our country's uh, history. He was a loyal Ulster man, but he was also a man who, who knew how important it was uh, for Northern Ireland to contribute to the, to the life of our nation at Westminster and indeed the affairs of our Commonwealth. He had uh, also a very wry sense of humour, and as leader of the Ulster Unionist Party, had a highly developed uh, level of tolerance. Uh, but uh, when he set his mind uh, on something which he believed in, um, and when he believed that it was in the best interest of unionism and the best interest of Northern Ireland, he displayed a steely determination. He was enormously hardworking as a constituency uh, member. Uh, and, but he was uh, very popular as, uh, as a party leader and as uh, a member of parliament. And the Ulster Unionist Party will genuinely grieve at the passing uh, of, of Lord Monlo. Uh, and I know that my party colleague, my assembly colleague, Sam Gardner, was with him uh, within very recent hours. Uh, and the entire party uh, will, uh, 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 will receive the news of his passing uh, in great sorrow. Uh, Lord Monlo uh, was um, also for a period uh, the Sovereign Grand Master of the, of the Royal Black Institution and it was insightful to see him on parade at Scarva on the 13th of July where he engaged with people and he made conversation with uh, the people who attended and still attend that huge demonstration but he very much um, was on their level and he was very, very warmly received. I do think that um, uh, he will be uh, greatly uh, mourned uh, as party leader. He was a one-party man. It was always only the Ulster Unionist Party for uh, Jim Monlo. Um, he was a highly regarded leader of a party, and his legacy remains in the values he represented and passed on. Thank you, and I call Mr William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I'm deeply saddened today at the loss of a great Ulsterman and a true friend, Jim Molyneux. Jim Molyneux was a man of integrity, honour, a true Christian, and a great friend and encourager. He was awarded a knighthood by Her Majesty in 1996, and the following year became Baron Molyneux of Khalid. This was fitting because Jim Molyneux was, in every sense, a Queen's man, someone who had high regard for the royal family. He's a former Sovereign Grand Master of the Royal Black Institution and was so for 27 years. He was a Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland, and he was a trustee of that body as well. He was most at come home and comfortable in the Diamond Lodge at Aldergrove. He was a great Orangeman and a true inspiration to any young Orangeman. He joined the RAF Regiment at the age of 21 and served this nation for five years during World War II. <clears throat> he was one of the first soldiers to arrive at Belson, 
And I remember him telling me about the smell and the sights that he witnessed when they arrived there that simply would be with him for the rest of his life. And sadly, that ended this morning when he was called home at 7.30. He was interested in gardening. He was interested in motor motorcycling, military history, the Royal British Legion. And he was a great encourager of young people, as Arlene has said. With Arlene and Peter and I all having been chairman of the Young Unionist Council, we all benefited from his encouragement and his cajoling at times. <laughs> Although small in stature, I regarded Jim Molyneux as a political colossus. As a young member of the Ulster Unionist Party in North Belfast, I was encouraged by Jim Molyneux in a way that others simply didn't bother. He encouraged many of us on this benches, to be, when we were members of the Young Unionist Council, to give leadership, and I never, ever will forget that. I regarded Jim as a personal friend, a, a political uh, mentor, a true unionist, and an outstanding Ulsterman. I shadowed him for three days at, Storm at uh, Westminster, and I couldn't believe that someone of his age could be so energetic. He was constantly working for Northern Ireland and for the unionist cause. A little quiet, and he was a quiet man of Ulster politics, as we've heard. He was a man with a great sense of humour. He was a great leader and a superb party manager with absolutely outstanding personal skills. He campaigned for me in 2007 in the Assembly elections in North Belfast, and I will never forget his encouragement at that time. And when I was Deputy Lord Mayor of this city in 19, or sorry, it was 90th birthday, I hosted a reception for him in the Lord Mayor's parlour. He was joined then by the former Archbishop of Armagh because he was a great and dedicated and committed Christian, a member of the Church of Ireland. He was a lay reader in his Khalid parish. I and many of my colleagues are deeply saddened today at the loss of a true friend. Jim was an inspiration to me. He was an inspiration and a guidance uh, to, to people in the unionist community and indeed across the, the community in Northern Ireland. His loss today is absolute, it's sudden and it's tragic. I extend my sympathy to Agnes, to Stephen, to Ian and to Janice. His, uh, her nieces, his nephew and niece. I, I have to say that today the politics in Northern Ireland, our community in Northern Ireland, is the weaker and the sadder for the loss of James Henry Molyneux. Thank you. I call Lord Morrow. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I, I too would like to be associated with the remarks that have already been made in relation to Lord Molyneux of Khalid. Uh, he certainly was a man of integrity and principle, and uh, you wouldn't have been long in this company till you'd realise that. He was a man, too, that had uh, a very good, wry sense of humour, something I appreciate in people, too. I don't know why, but uh, I do that. And uh, you wouldn't be long in this company till you discovered that, that he was that type of person. I was also honoured to have him as one of my co-sponsors when I was elevated to the House of Lords in June 2006, and I got to know him much better uh, when I went over to the Lords, and uh, I was often in his company, and I always found it to be good company to be in. He was indeed a principled man. He was a man of integrity, as has already been stated, and uh, I have no doubt that this country will be the poorer because of his passing, although due to his age and health, he wasn't to the forefront like he used to be, but somehow his influence seemed to be always there, even in the House of Lords when others would inquire about him, how he was doing. And uh, it, it certainly, he was a man that was not out of people's mind, although he wasn't able to be in attendance. He certainly was someone who uh, led the Ulster Unionist Party during what I would say were the worst accesses of the troubles here in Northern Ireland. And he was a man who was steadfast and sure in everything that he did. And he was unflinching. He was a unionist, undoubtedly, unflinchingly a unionist in, in every sense of the word. And he had no truck with anything that would be deemed to weaken the union or to depart from the union. He was steadfast in that. And uh, no doubt, the uh, Ulster Unionists will miss him the most, as he was their former leader. But I think unionism in general, I think Northern Ireland in general, will miss him because of the man that he was. And I would just extend my sympathy uh, and my prayers to the Molyneux family today and wish them everything that is right in the days ahead. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as an elected representative for Lagan Valley, uh, I would want to put on right, uh, my record uh, a tribute to Lord Molyneux. I didn't know uh, Lord Molyneux. I had never met Lord Molyneux. However, as a member for Lagan Valley, I feel like I got to know him very well from his constituents. Um, every time, whenever I'm out on the doors, people will bring up to me uh, Jim Molyneux and the work ethic uh, that he had in serving uh, the people. Uh, he was a very faithful constituency member of Parliament. And I know my colleague, uh, Geoffrey Donaldson, uh, mourns his passing most keenly. Uh, Geoffrey continued uh, Lord Molyneux's legacy in the Houses of Parliament when he took over in 1997 as the MP for uh, the Lagan Valley uh, constituency. Uh, Lord Molyneux served during the darkest uh, days of the Troubles. Uh, and I want to put on record my thanks to him uh, because today my generation and the generation to follow have a, have a legacy inherited from him where Northern Ireland, under the most serious threat uh, from terrorists, remains and will continue to remain part of the United Kingdom. And I want to thank Lord Molyneux for his stand during that time. Danny Kinahan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to be very brief, but I'm very lucky to be following Lord Molyneux in South Antrim where he really was known as a phenomenally hard worker. And others have mentioned how much of a gentleman, his great integrity, and how he really cared for Northern Ireland, but also for all his constituents, and especially for Crumlin. And I, like others who have canvassed with him, know how difficult it was to keep up with him. But everybody knew him, everybody spoke to him, and I think I'd like to really echo what others have said, but we all owe him a great sense of gratitude. Thank you. And, uh, that uh, ends that item of business.